All right. I think we are all set up. Okay, perfect. So what's up, YouTube? Welcome into the last Bible study of 2023. We are super excited that you have decided to join us today. I pray that the peace of the Lord finds you. I pray that as you listen to this Bible study, that your heart is open and ready to receive what thus says the Lord. I pray also that your ears are open, okay? And that you not only hear what the word is saying, but that you do it. And how do you do it? You apply it to your life, amen? And so today we are going to be talking about a physics slash chemistry concept. So for my science nerds out there, this Bible study is for you. Hey, hey, you know, cohesive force of Christ. No. Okay. And so anywho, um, <laughs> to everybody else in the room, I'm just super excited that you guys are here. And so first we are going to begin with the scripture meditation. And so um, just to keep us on good timing, we're only going to spend five minutes on this slide. So if I could have maybe two people um Tell me when you read this part of John 14, 27. Now, this isn't the full scripture, but this is a large part of what encompasses the meaning of today's Bible study. So it says in John 14, 27, let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. So just two people that want to reply. Want to reply. Ooh, hey, Ooh, cut. hey, cut. <laughs> That's okay. Um, <clears throat> this scripture, what it means to me, um, it basically Jesus is just saying, rest in Him. Your your faith in Him should give you perfect peace because we should know that He handles all of our needs, and there's no need to worry because He knows what we need and He will accomplish those things. So we should dwell in the perfect peace of Him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, cuz. Thank you, cuz. And then William. Uh yeah, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me all right? Mm hmm Yeah, so um I'll I'll address the scripture and the question um in the same in the same manner. So um our, I believe last time I shared a little bit about a hard season. Um, but I had stepped out on faith, uh, and the Lord was telling me to leave. Uh, my corporate gig. And um, I was like, man, I'm gonna do this. I had all the faith in the world, you know, packed everything up, left my situation and hit the road. And on the way, um, I got robbed. Um, we got my phone, got my keys, and I had everything that I had to my name in my in my vehicle. And my vehicle got jacked um, with everything in it. And uh, I was left out in the city for a couple of days with nothing. And in that situation, I like my, my with all the different variables that I was uh, just trying to go through, trying to, you know, <laughs> just trying to navigate life at the moment. Um, man, I, I can honestly tell you um, the grace and the peace of God um, kept my mind together um, and kept me moving to the point where, you know, it was just, you know, you knew it was nothing but the Lord that made a way after each situation and after each circumstance. And, it seemed like it was almost like I, I'm not going to be able to make it out of the situation. And the Lord was like, just keep pushing. Um, and um, I finally got out of the area. I had some people come get me. I was able to get a phone. And even they, when they got done praying, like the name of this cash, app, I didn't have anybody's number. And the name of the gentleman's cash app popped in my spirit. And um, I, I hit him on cash app because they were going through all my cash app and trying to solicit funds from everybody in my contact list. Long story short, um, after this ordeal about, you know, about four or five weeks, uh, you know, my vehicle report is stolen. I just got my vehicle back maybe two days ago. Wow. Um, and, you know, for the way it all went down, not even having the funds for it and somebody calling me saying, hey, I know you need some money for your vehicle. I don't know what you got to do, but you got to do it now. And literally just sending me everything I needed. And even the pickup of the, the vehicle went smoothly. So, you know, I just, I say, I say all this to say, if anything, when the peace, the peace of God is for trouble. And when you read that scripture and it says, he'll give you courage and strength in every challenge. I, you know, before I would, I would give like some type of, 
um, some type of saying like, you know, you know, just trust in the Lord. But when you when you literally when the enemy comes in like a flood, you need God's peace so that you can battle from a place of peace. And when you are steadfast in the Lord, you know, and you just make your mind up, man, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No matter what comes, no matter how difficult, no matter how big the struggle, I have faith in God that he'll work it out one way or another. And even if I don't have what I need, I, I'm cool with it being cut away for the moment because it's something I didn't, I really didn't need. And just going through that process, man, gave me peace and gave me a strength that a lot of people that were around me were like, I don't know how you're doing it, right? And it, honestly, it's it's trusting the leading of the Lord and the Holy Spirit and just watching him work through my situation and people, it only strengthened me. So I would just share with anybody who might be listening to this, man, trust in the Lord in all your ways and lean not to your own understanding. I promise you, he'll direct you. William, you always drop in a word of wisdom for us. I think William answered both. So to save time, you guys are going to move on to the next thing. But that, man, like you said, when you're really going through a situation and the enemy comes in like a flood, scripture does say God raises up a standard. And as you said, that standard is his peace. It, that standard protects us the peace of God protects us and so that's kind of going to be a little of what we talk about today so uh, I thank you so much for sharing that personal experience with us and encouraging us to know that you know God can tell us to do something and it won't always be a goal path <laughs> to the next thing as you have said so thank you again William for sharing that wow all right so um now welcoming you to today's Bible study, okay? So today's Bible study is the cohesive force of Christ. The cohesive force of Christ. Uh, as you guys see, I just want to see, do you, do you know what element we're going to be talking about today? <laughs> what Water. <element>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does anybody know the chemical name of water? H2O. <laughs> yes, H2O. What molecules are in water? Two hydrogen. Hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> Two hydrogen and one oxygen. Y'all are so okay. Or either y'all just like y'all water, but either way it go. Everybody gets an A plus from me. Okay, so today we are talking about the cohesive force of Christ. So we're going to be speaking, um, looking through a physics slash chemistry type lens today. So for my nerds out here, you will enjoy today's Bible study. And even for people who did not like science, I guarantee you, like the students I tutor, you will walk away excited and happy that you learned something new. Okay. All right. So um, let's get on into it. So first I have to get release a disclaimer, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want you guys to know that there are many unseen forces that sustain us and keep us level in this physical realm, okay? And so what do I mean? If I were to ask you guys, what force is ensuring that we aren't flying around in space, what force would that be? Gravity. Gravity. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the force that most of you guys would mention, right? But even with the force of gravity, we know that there's other unseen forces that are also keeping you where you are, right? Like the normal force, right? And then it's the force, the forces of the the drag, the wind, and the the static and dynamics, all of these different types of forces and equations and physics that I did not like. Amen. And so the point is the same goes for the spiritual realm. Okay, so we have all heard of unseen. Um, if you aren't talking, can you make sure that your uh, microphone is muted, please? All right, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, so um, just that's exactly how it is in the spiritual realm, right? So we know that there are those unseen dark powers, those forces, but then there's also forces within the kingdom of God. So today 
we will be exploring one force. And the reason why I'm saying it's a disclaimer is because as you follow along with the teaching, you can say, oh, this is also a force. That may be true, but I just want you guys to focus on the cohesive force of Christ because in the future, we may be speaking of different forces. For example, favor is even a force in the kingdom of God. When you carry the favor of Esther, no matter where that girl went, it caused anybody that laid eyes on her to favor her. And that in itself is a force, a force that is used in the kingdom of God to uh, confound the, the wise system of the world amen or the wise systems of the world so i just wanted to make sure i had that disclaimer um i think that was like my science brain but i just wanted to make sure y'all know that <laughs> all right so um next slide oops okay so i got a question for y'all so what is the concept that allows for ants to walk on the surface of water, okay? So in the image below, you see this ant. He's like, hey, look, I'm walking on water. And then the water molecules, they're saying, let's stick together to help the bug walk across. So I know some of y'all may not know it and that's okay, but I at least wanted to give the opportunity for you know my nerds out there to answer. So what is it called? Okay, Courtney. Oh, Lauren will send it. Said it, but go ahead, Courtney. <laughs> now they got it. It's okay. Y'all are some complete nerds, and I absolutely love it. So we have one, two, three people that said surface tension. Okay, so shout out to y'all. Y'all paid attention in school. All right, and so um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about surface tension. And um, yeah, let's just go to the next slide so I can show you guys about it. So what is surface tension? I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but there are some insects because they are super light in weight, they're able to walk on water, right? And so surface tension, it is a skin-like layer. So um, I, I don't know if you guys ever did those experiments in school where you would take the disposable pipette, uh, disposable pipette the thing that you like suck up solution with right and then you like put the water on the thing and then you try and penetrate it and then it was like kind of hard so like I, hopefully it's not hard but it wasn't easy to like poke through hopefully that's making sense but surface tension it's a skin like layer okay so it's formed by the cohesive property of water so i don't want to confuse you guys there's two properties of water cohesive and adhesive so adhesive think of it as tape it sticks to any surface. If you put water on, it's gonna stick to any surface, right? That's the adhesive property. But when you think of cohesion, it's when something sticks to itself, okay? So when you have a group of the 10 negative spies, right, that went into the land, they were a cohesive group of negativity because negativity groups with negativity, right, okay? <laughs> and so um, that's like a perfect like real world example. But what happens is as these water molecules come together, it makes it resistant to external forces. I know some of you that are highly spiritual are sitting here like, oh, yes, this makes a lot of sense. I'm I'm a cohesive layer. <laughs> but it enables light animals to walk on its surface. OK, that's the point. I just want you to know that surface tension is what allows us to be or well, not us, but insects to be able to walk on water. OK, and it is because of the cohesive property of water so what i do want you to pay attention to is this next part so in order for an animal or a insect i mean to walk on water there's two conditions that must be met the first is that the insect it has to be light okay it has to have a much lighter density than water and that's why we're using the ant and also the second thing is that the water molecules they have to cohere to one another beneath the surface. So again, it must be light and the water molecules beneath the surface must cohere to one another, okay? So that's like as science-y as we're gonna get today, all right? Cool. Next. And if I'm going too fast, y'all can let me know, but I think y'all got it. 
So how does the concept of surface tension in physics and chemistry, how does this relate to Christ? Like Sunray, why do I feel like I'm having a panic attack and I'm back in my chemistry class in high school that I failed, right? Well, <laughs> um, when you look in physics and chemistry, this is what is used to help the insects walk on the water, right? And again, the subject on top of the water must be light. And also, let me say this, since this is a science-based type of Bible study, I will be reiterating things multiple times, like how I do as a tutor, to ensure that you fully understand what I'm saying, okay? So a lot of the questions that you might have might get answered as we go along. But again, repeating it, surface tension, the, water, the subject on top of the water, the insect must be lighter than the water. And then the water molecules beneath the surface, they have to like cohere to one another. It's almost like a, a platform. And so in Christ, what does it take for us to walk on water? Well, the first thing is that we must be lighter. Okay. We have to be lighter than water. What? You'll figure it out. And then two, the situation must have the cohesive force of Christ. Can you say this with me? The cohesive force force of Christ. Yes? No? Okay. The cohesive, the cohesive force of Christ. The cohesive force of Christ. The cohesive force of Christ. Yes. Very good job, class. All right. Perfect. So this is what's needed for um, humans to walk on water. And I know you're like, what's the cohesive force of Christ? We're going to get there. So first thing is that you must be lighter. So Sunray, how can I make myself lighter in Christ? There's two things that you must do, okay? The first thing is you have to cast your cares. And so what does it mean to cast something? For people who read the book of Jonah, when the storm started getting real rowdy, they started throwing things off board to lighten the boat to try and make things easier, right? But they didn't know that Jonah was the dead weight, right? <laughs> And so the thing is, in that situation, when you cast something, that means I'm not thinking about it. I threw it deep in the water. And so for a lot of you, when you are saying, I cast my cares on God, but two hours later, you pick it back up, you didn't really cast it. You set it aside. When you cast it, imagine yourself throwing it into the Atlantic Ocean and it never coming back to you, okay? That is what it means to cast your care. So whatever book bag you have on, as you can see, our aunt friend up here, he has a lot of cares on him. And right now he would not be able to walk on water. He will not be light enough, right? But over here, when he cast his cares, he removed the backpack. And so if we see ourselves as an ant, an ant with no load on its back will be able to walk on water. So the first thing is we have to learn to cast our cares on Christ. That's the first thing. Second thing, you have to yoke yourself to Christ, okay? We all know Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 29, where it says that his burden is easy and his yoke is light, okay? So what is this easy yoke? What is this, I mean, what is this light yoke? And what is this easy burden that Jesus was talking about, okay? So let's go here to the next one. So first, let's talk about what is a yoke. So um, typically the first definition is what we think of when we hear a yoke. It's a piece of timber. So it's the, um, the neck piece that connects one ox to another, right? And then also it says, and this is all uh, from the Bible dictionary, and it says it can also be a mark of servitude or of bondage, okay? But then the third is that it can be a chain, a rope, a link, or a bond of connection. So a yoke is a bond of connection. It's something that connects you to something else. It does not always have to be the super rigid yoke, but it could be something that's lighter, okay? Like a chain, a rope, a link, something that can be broken, okay? And I'm trying to create that imagery here. And so next, um, let's talk about the light yoke. So what is the light yoke? So first of all, a light yoke is not very restrictive. It's very flexible. So what does that mean? You have a choice. Scripture says in Isaiah 1 and 19, if you are willing and obedient, right? It says willing and obedient. Do you want to follow me? Do you want to do? Because he says, you can take my yoke 
you can take it. You don't have to, but you can take it, right? So the light yoke also denotes that it's not something that is forced upon you. You have free will, okay? And then the other thing about the light yoke is something that's easier to carry equals easy to do, right? And then another thing is that a light yoke, it can be broken, and so you're like, Samir, what do you mean a light yoke can't be broken? All yokes can be broken. But a light yoke, it can, it's easier to be broken. And what do I mean by that? So um, when I was sitting with this for a few days, talking to the, to the Lord about how our sight is connected to Christ, how our sight is connected to certain things. The Lord is always telling us to seek him. Or when we keep our eyes on him, we'll get this. When we keep our eyes on him, right? And so the point that I'm trying to make here is that the light yoke is your sight. Because the yoke is light and it's easy, it's also just as easy for us to take our eyes off of him and become unyoked. A lot of us have experienced that. Maybe even today, we've had certain situations come up where we've taken our eyes off or we've taken our light yoke off of Christ. And then in turn, a whole lot of issues ensued, a whole lot of emotions ensued, a whole lot of frustration ensued, right? And so um, let me go deeper into this. So let's discuss this. What are the things in life that caused you or have caused you to take your, or causes you, that caused you or have caused you to take your eyes off Christ? What was the result in those moments of you unyoking your sight, yourself, y'all see what I did there? You got to yoke yourself, but your sight, y'all get it. Okay. From Christ. So let's just have a few people respond. Um, please be brief in your responses and we'll take some responses now. Naomi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Naomi, Anasia, and then Cassie. Um, there was a time where I thought when I, I guess around the time I first met God, I thought he lied to me. Um, he promised me something. And the day I thought was going to happen, it didn't happen. And I felt very embarrassed and betrayed by him. Um, and I recognized that in that moment when I told myself subconsciously that he lied to me, I thought he was unreliable. And I didn't realize it at the time, but... I, in hindsight, I know that I had unyoked my sight with him and I pretty much just gave up, almost like gave up that relationship. And when he revealed that to me, like three months later, um, he showed me that I couldn't receive from him or even commune with him because of that posture that I was in for those few months. And after that, um, yeah, I would say I was able to see again, which in a sense, like all the gifts that he had given me before spiritually were just dissipated. It just, that's where I was, but yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think a lot okay. of people have been there before, too, so I, you're definitely not alone. And then, um, uh, Nasia? Hey, everybody. So, um, I have to say that, like, Whenever God is like, your eyes have taken, you've taken your eyes off of me. He always leads me back to Peter. And um, two things that have, have tempted me and then I have allowed them to take my eyes off of the Lord happens to be, um, I, it's really the lust of the flesh, but it's more so related to shopping. And th I know that sounds like pretty obscure, but like, um, kind of going from like a place of like struggling and then having enough and then kind of going through the wilderness and seeing things that the Lord has promised you and you just don't have the money to get them and you're trying to make things happen um those kind of like hit my faith but it was also to show me that my faith was also not on solid ground and then the second thing was regret and mainly that's just looking back in the past and the Holy Spirit, um, like for me, for example, um, I had like rough moments this year, fighting depression and different things. And that came about from just looking back in the past and regretting so many things and just wishing and thinking that my life should be different. And God's like, no, I have you right where you need to be and just continue to look forward and keep your eyes on me. 
And so those are a few things that has taken my eyes off of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Anasia, for sharing that. And then we have um, Kazi. Hi, I figured out how to put my hand up. <laughs> um, so I, um, I said idolatry, and I think the worst type of idolatry is when you're, uh, you're desiring something because you know it's a desire God has placed in you, uh, and then you want it for the glory of God, but then you end up just idolizing it, and it's just awful because you're in this vicious cycle of I want to serve God but then you end up putting it before God. So it's just an awful thing to get into, but that that is my answer. <laughs> Idolatry. No, I was going to say that also kind of also goes in a line with um, Anasia as well. Like what she said, the lust of the flesh, like that's mm. really the source of that idolatry too, right? Because you keep looking at it. So mm. you're on point. Thank you for sharing that, Kazi. And again, as always, I love your accent. <laughs> <laughs> feels so great <laughs> oh thank you but oh I was gonna say last week remember the word 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 I'm sorry but okay next <laughs> and <laughs> um tie 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 t t t tie t don't get me wrong I saw your hand was raised but did you, you don't want Tatiana raise? Tatiana okay hi hi everyone um oh I was just gonna say um I guess my biggest struggle and um something I kept like taking my eyes off it. I mean, he would bring me right back on track, but it was just like one in like a, a covering down here. Like I'm like, I'm like, Lord, I know he um I had to separate from like almost everything. I was in a season of isolation and everything. And I'm like, I really wanted to just um go fully into my purpose and like He's been bringing me more and more people, like even joining in on this study right now. It's like, um, he moved me to a completely different city, made a move of faith to a completely different city. And I'm like, okay, God. And I met like friends on the way and everything. Um, glory to him. And I'm just like, I, but it would still be like isolation, even with, even with me, like they meet new people. And I'm like, I, I'm like, Lord, I, I like, I want to do these things but like I'm always in isolation I feel like I need a covering which would have me looking for like um more like connection with people instead of just like literally focusing on the isolation season that he had me in um so yeah that was something that kept like delaying me heavily but, but yeah he would always bring my um you know focus my eyes back on him so I'm grateful for that wow thank you for sharing that and then mama. All right. Um, so I wanted to share this. Um, one of the things that was having to take my eye off the floor and I didn't even realize I was doing it because I think it's so easy, especially if it's habitual, like it's your habit. Um, I was always really driven for real wise and uh, whatever I put my mind to, I'm going after it, whatever, by any means necessary. And so I found myself, God had pulled me back from working um, as much. And then he kind of like let me kind of work a little bit more. And I I like literally went in overdrive to the point I went way beyond what he had said. And I was so focused on completing um, some of the things he had told me, but it was in my own strength. So I had to turn my eyes back to him and let go of what I was holding so that he can carry me. And he's literally been carrying me since then. So I had left my job and trusted him. And he has been Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Um, but that yoke was so heavy, y'all, that I felt like I was being crushed under the burden. So I knew it wasn't God's yoke anymore. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mommy. You're welcome. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So those were some great responses. And so as you guys can see, look, as you guys can see, you all mentioned different things or situations that caused you to take your eyes off of Christ, which in turn yoked you to something else. Okay. So let's go a little bit deeper into this. So when I um, am speaking about the light yoke, remember our sight is the light yoke. So when I was studying and I've always noticed this, but I'm like, God, I don't understand why there's a spiritual connection between sight and sustenance. So sustenance is sustainability, those things which you need to keep you going, all right? When we look at Matthew 6, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So seek, 
involves you staring at something. It involves you being so focused on something. So focus so heavily, uh, yoke yourself to the kingdom of God so heavily and know that I will supply all of your needs. So right there, we begin to see that our yite, our, our yite, our sight is the light yoke because there's a connection clearly between sight and sustenance. Keep your eyes on me. Um, always put me first and I will provide and I will do X, Y, and Z. And so when we look at this light yoke, it is your direct connection to Christ, right? Through this connection. So for example, if through your sight, you are yoked, there's a there's literally a, 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 a rope that goes from your eyes to Christ, right? Through this connection, you receive all that you need. The love, the light, the joy, the strength, the wisdom. Everybody that began mentioning, um, oh, for you guys that uh, want to annotate, unfortunately, you aren't able to annotate without it like popping up on the whole screen. So I'm sorry. Uh, just take screenshots of it. But um, so just like with the things that you guys mentioned that took your eyes off of Christ, those things, you you notice that your light, the light kind of went away in your situation. You didn't have as much joy. You didn't have as much strength. And all it did was take for you to remove your mind, remove your sight off of that, right? It's like that thing that they teach you when you're driving. When they're teaching you how to turn, they say, look into your turn. You can't just turn the car and keep looking straight forward because what's going to happen, the car goes wherever your eyes go, right? That's what they tell you when you're learning to drive. And so it's that same thing. It's a source of our direct connection to Christ. And we know what scripture says. It says, as you keep your eye on God, as you keep it on the Lord, he will sustain you with an eternal peace. He said, keep your, he said to the one who keeps their mind steadfast on me, I will give them an eternal peace. And so the goal is that you want to have your eyes yoked to Christ. We always talk about the yoke with the neck, but you can be yoked to Christ with your neck and your eyes be looking all the way left, <laughs> you still not going to get to where you need to go because your eyes aren't yoked to Christ. You, you got to imagine Christ being right in front of you. And as he moves back, because your eyes are yoked with him, you are moving wherever he moves just like that, if that makes sense. And so I just want to review before I move on to the next thing. So remember, <clears throat> surface tension, this is the cohesive property of water, right? It's like a skin, it's like a skin, um, like a skin cell almost, right? And it allows small insects to walk on water. There are two conditions in Christ, right? The first is it must be light. So this is above the water, right? So this is casting your cares and yoking your sight, yoking yourself to Christ, right? So that's the first thing that is above the water. But it is the cohesive force that sustains you below the water, okay? So what we just explored the last few slides was the first condition, which is to be light. So we have to cast our cares. We got to take the book bag off. We got to take the heavy burdens off. And we have to yoke our sight to Christ, okay? That's the first condition. So now we're all lighter because we got our eyes focused on Christ and then that. But that don't mean that we can still walk on water because we still need the cohesive force of Christ. So that is what we're going to talk about next. All right. So the cohesive force of Christ. So on this diagram, you see that you are sustained both above and under the water. So let's look. If we look here. So this is the yoke, your eyes on Christ. So, well, technically the ant looking at us, but let's just imagine the ant, the ant just saying, hey, y'all, you know, but imagine the ant's eyes looking at Christ, okay? <laughs> and so it works to keep you light above the water. So that is the yoke that can, that uh, gives you peace above the water, that keeps you sustained above the water, that makes you light enough to float. And what were the two things that made us enough, uh, light enough, uh, light enough on top of the water? What are the two things? What are the what are the two things that we just talked about? Casting your burdens. And what was the other one? Keeping Keep your eyes on God. Yes. So wait, say it again, Cassie. Not Cassie. Uh, say it again, uh, Tati. I said I'm um, casting your burdens, and I think the other one was keeping your eyes. 
Okay. Yes, perfect. Yes. So those are the two things. So that's this yoke right here, right? And so we see the ant is walking on water. But remember, this is above the water. Your eyes looking at Christ, that is above the water. That is what allows the ant to walk on the water. But what is it underneath the ant? It is the cohesive force of Christ that holds you up and lets you walk on the water, right? So your eyesight being on Christ, that keeps you above the water, but there's a force beneath the water that allows you to walk on the water. Prayerfully, this is making sense. Like I said, I'm hammering this in so you can understand it. And so when you look here, this is your book bag. You cast your cares away, right? You cast your cares away and you got your sight. So you have two, both here, okay? And so did I lose anybody on the diagram? Courtney? Yeah, because I'm just trying to figure out, okay, I know the cohesive force is under the water, but like what's in the water that's making it a cohesive force? Like what's in the water? That's where we're going next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that is perfect. No, we're going there next. So just, just call it the cohesive force, but we're going to talk about what that cohesive force is. Okay, perfect. Anybody else had a question? Are y'all understand it? I think we good. Okay, next. So the cohesive force of Christ. So let's first talk about what is cohesion. So remember, this is when water molecules cohere to one another. And so what happens in chemistry for anybody that knows anything about intermolecular forces, okay? So what happens is when these cells come together, they polarize. And when things polarize, it forms an attractive force. So an attractive force is a very, it's not super strong, but it's a pretty strong force, right? And so there's this attraction, there's this force. That's where we get the phrase cohesive force from, okay? Because that is what keeps the, um, the ant being able to walk on the water and not fall beneath the water because there's some strength there in that force, okay? It's like somebody punch you in your face, you're gonna be like, you're not gonna be like oh that didn't hurt you're gonna be like oh, you know what I mean and so <laughs> the next thing the cohesion in Christ so remember just equilibrating both cohesion in Christ so if cohesion in science is when mo water molecules cohere to one another to create an attractive force then what is that in Christ it is when the presence of Christ causes a unification a cohering in whatever situation he's in to create an attractive force Okay, so what is the attractive force of Christ? Peace. It is written in Isaiah 9 and 6 that Christ is the prince of peace. Whenever he is present in a situation, peace is in the midst. Okay, so the cohesive force of Christ is peace. The cohesive force of Christ is peace. We're going to continue going. This is going to make more sense with the diagrams. And so Sunray, the cohesive force of Christ is peace. How? It is the peace of Christ that brings unification in all areas of our lives. It is the peace of Christ that keeps us firmly planted and rooted when we go through situations such as Brother William mentioned earlier at the very beginning of this Bible study, right? And more importantly, it's the peace of Christ that allows us to walk on water. All right? I'm going to explain this a little bit more. So this is my summation of Peter walks on water, then sinks. Jesus made his disciples get on the boat and head to the other side. While he went to go pray, the boat had traveled a considerable distance from the land and was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on water, they were terrified. So terrified, they thought it was a ghost. But Jesus reassured them to be courageous and to not be terrified because it was him. Peter then said, Jesus, if it's really you, call me. So he came out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He then cried out for the Lord to save him, to which the Lord reached out his hand and caught him, saying that he was of little faith and asking, why did he 
freaked out. So now what you guys just learned is you learned the two, the two, uh, the two conditions for a cohesive force. Let's go back or not for a cohesive force, but the two conditions, right? So the first condition was that you have to be light enough. You got to cast your cares and you got to turn your eyes to Christ. You have to yoke your sight to Christ. And then we just talked about the cohesive force of Christ. Jesus has to be present in the situation. If his, if he's not present, there's no peace. And if there's no peace, you will sink. Amen. Because the peace of Christ is what allows us to walk on the water. It is the force that unifies things. When we think of the definition of peace, peace is when you bring things together, when you sew things together, when you weave things together, when there could be a fight, but when there's peace, everybody's in union. Everybody has some sort of understanding, right? That's what we just discussed. So this now is going to be us taking the knowledge we just learned and we're applying it to scripture, okay? And we're specifically looking at where Peter walks on water, okay? So let's go to the next slide. So Peter walks on water. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is Peter walks on water. So I'm gonna explain the image to you and then we're gonna go through the uh, conditions. So here, these are the 11 disciples or AKA the 11 ants, all right? <laughs> and then here we have Peter. Oh, Jesus, right? And then here we have Peter's cares. Now, the sight of Peter we see is yoked to Christ. He looking at Jesus like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening, right? And since we have Jesus on the water, somebody catch the revelation, Jesus was on the water. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the cohesive force on the water, which is, I mean, the cohesive force on the water, which is the peace of Christ, right? Makes sense? Okay, so are the conditions fully met? Have Peter's cares been casted away? No, um, because he started to doubt. Wait, but we looking at the scenario where he is walking on water. Right now, his- oh. Yoked to Christ, yes. So right now, as his sight is yoked to Christ, has his cares been casted? Yes. Yes. Yes, and we can say yes because they are in the water, right? So then it, are his eyes yoked to Christ? Yes. Yes, yeah. right? Is, is Christ in the midst? So is Christ on the water? Yes. Yes. So should he be sinking? No. No. Amen. Y'all got it perfectly. That's no. right. So Peter is walking on water because he has casted his cares. He has yoked his eyes. He's yoked his sight to Christ. And because Christ is in the midst of the situation, he is the peace in the situation. He is the cohesive force on the water, the Prince of Peace, because the Prince of Peace brings peace, right? So he's able to walk on water. Amazing. But let's look at an opposite scenario. Peter sinks in the water. So we still have the 11 disciples. I wanted to put a comment here like, bro, what is you doing? But I, I, I thought, you know, maybe I shouldn't add that there. But we have the 11 disciples sitting here. And we have us down here. I'm not sure if you guys can see us. Hold on. At the bottom. I don't know why I did that. Well, we down here at the bottom. Y'all see these people? It's the Bible study crew. Everybody say, hey, y'all see y'all stuff on y'all phone. Hey. Study. that's us right <laughs> and so right here we have the g like jesus is on the water we have the cohesive force on the water right okay so i'm not going to explain this image too much i'm just going to ask y'all the questions so has peter's cares been casted no and he took his eyes off of jesus what did he put his eyes on on us and who else his cares on that his wind cares and what else he picked up his problems so that's why he started to think because he started the, the problem and what else the water and what else fear his atmosphere y'all not gonna talk y'all not gonna talk about the ant rent he's focused on his ant rent y'all see that his ant rent so he's now <laughs> you to look at us. <laughs> okay. rent. That's hilarious. He's yoked to his fear, his wind, and his ant rent. 
But look at Jesus. Jesus is still there chilling. So is Christ still in a situation? Is he still, is the is peace still in the situation? Yes. Yeah. But because yeah. he took his eyes off Christ, what is he doing now? He's sinking, right? And so what that what that told me when I was doing this, I said, wow, Jesus, wow, God, y'all so smart because Christ, you're still in my situation. So there's peace still available. But because I yoked myself to now my aunt rent, my aunt child support, my aunt ain't got no job, whatever is going on, my aunt TikTok. because I became so focused and yoked myself on those things and then whatever other cares, now I don't have peace and I'm sinking, but the Prince of Peace is still in the midst of the situation. What this reminds me of is when they were crossing uh, the Sea of Galilee, right? When they were crossing to the other side, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, he was in the midst. He was the cohesive force in that situation. He was laying down in the boat. And so if they would have took if they would have yoked their eyes to Christ, you know what they would have got in return. It's a connection. They would have got that peace. They would have got that stability. They all would have been sitting there asleep. But because they yoked themselves to the storm that was around them, the peace was in the midst of the situation. So I don't know who needs to hear this today, but some of you, your peace is there, but you need to get it back by returning your gaze to Christ. Because as long as you focus on your ant rent, as long as you focus on your ant utilities, as long as you focus on your ant friends as long as you focus on the ant farm i used to like that show on disney channel you are putting yourself in a position to sink when christ is saying i am the cohesive force of your situation i am sustaining you and the other thing is too right you have to cast your cares because there are some of you who know christ is in your situation but you won't you want your cake and you want to eat it too you like jesus i still want to worry about this but even if the cohesive force of Christ is there, you still could possibly sink because all conditions have to be met. So if you are still holding on to what Tyrone, Jerome, Shalom, and all everybody else did, what's happening is you are weighing yourself down in a situation that Jesus already gave you peace. You're praying for peace, but you're holding a piece of your past. Y'all like what I did there? You're, you're praying for peace, but you're holding a piece of your past. No? Okay. So... No, we want the girl sinking in water, and so um, as y'all see, you got the Bible study group down here. The the aunt looking at us like, ah, oh, you see what I'm going through? Do y'all see what the Lord doing to me? I'm struggling, and it's like, bro, put your and we and look, look just like the world, we recording it. Y'all see him? Look at that aunt, that aunt falling through the water. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so um, okay, makes sense. Next. So what is the point, Sun Rain? Because y'all know I always like to make it clear. So peace is the cohesive force of Christ. It allows us to walk on water when circumstances of life should make us sink. It's a lot of you that are in situations that other people also are in and they are sinking. And so you are literally a miracle. Walking on water is a miracle. The Christ, he gives, there. the sustaining force of Christ is his peace. Because his peace is what keeps you above water. Do you not know how many people have finances? They got all the money you want. You, you praying for the husband. You praying for the car. You praying for this. And there are people that have those things. But because they don't have the peace of Christ, they don't have the cohesive force of Christ. So they have nothing underneath them holding them to, uh, to keep them from falling through the water. But you have Christ not only below you, but you also have him above you if you keep your eyes on him and if you also cast your cares on him he sustains you all over from your top to your bottom it's literally the perfect representation of the 15th hebrew letter semek which represents the all-encompassing support of christ the all-encompassing support of god when god says he's protecting you he's protecting you on all sides from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet to the left to the right shoot he protecting your whole house he forms an encampment around you and he sends his angels to stand around that encampment with fiery swords. And anybody that dare come in, they're going to be burnt up. And y'all going to be having a good roasted picnic of vegetables. Because y'all know I can only eat vegetables right now. So vegetables. Amen. And so the thing is, though, it's not enough to just invite Christ into your situation. 
you must also cast your cares. Some of you are literally praying, God, bring me peace, but you still ain't cast your care and your sight is on. Somebody told me to stop using Tyrone, so I'm gonna use it again. Your sight is on Tyrone. Your sight is on DMs. Your sight is on scrolling on YouTube. Your sight is on anything but making the vision plain. If anything, you making a vision very unclear with all the prophetic words you watching, with all the, the, the different voices and spirits, because not everybody that prophesies has the spirit of the Lord in them. So you're bringing all of, you're yoking yourself to 10 million prophetic words a day. And then you wonder why you're confused and feel like you're drowning at the end of the night. And it is because you, and you try and invite Christ into, okay, God, God, come on into this situation. I need peace. And he's like, but you got all these yokes connecting to this, to that, to this, to this, to that. Take on my yoke because you are heavy burdened, heavy laden and burdened down with cares of the world, with cares of certain things. If you keep your eyes on me, his word says in Isaiah 30 and 21, that I will speak in your ear and that I will guide you. His word even says in Psalm 32 and eight, he says, with my loving eyes, I will guide you. He has loving eyes towards you no matter what you've done. So I rebuke that spirit of shame. Anybody here that's like, well, God, you know, don't look. God looks at you with love. I remember a month or two ago, he gave me a, a dream. And it was at first, I'm like, what's going on here? It was literally a line of people. And there was this man that would look at each person with so much love in his eyes. And I, my heart swelled up so big. And I said, wow, that's God. He looks at us with so much love in his eyes. And he says it. He says that I love you with an everlasting love. He says, you are precious and honorable in my sight in Isaiah 43 and 4. He says, you are precious and honorable in my sight. And the same word that he uses there for precious is the same word that he used for rare when it spoke about the word of the Lord being rare in the times of the prophet Samuel. That is 1 Samuel 3 and 2, right? Or 1 Samuel 3 and 1, where it spoke about that. And what I thought was so interesting is each of us are also the word of God. So it's not just the word in the Bible that's precious and weighty. You you also are too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody needs to hear that. So we rebuke that spirit of, of uh, shame and of defeat and, oh God, you don't love me. And, oh God, you don't. No, he does love you. He loves you beyond loves you. The things that you think are ugly are the things he's like, just let me, just let my hand on it. Just let me touch it. Just let me heal you. Just let me renew you. Just let me restore you. Just let me, just know that he looks at you with loving eyes. Amen. And so, how does this relate to 2024? In 2024, you got to be a water walker, period. Because when things begin to happen throughout the world, you want to be able to invite the Prince of Peace into every situation. And you want to be able to cast your cares and yoke your sight to Christ. Amen? Okay. So for people who are here, I just recommend you screenshot this. For people on YouTube, screenshot this. These are reflection questions. These are things you need to look at before you start your year next year, okay? What were the unseen forces in 2023 that caused you to take your eyes off Christ, okay? What habits kept you from putting your eyes on him? What habits helped you? And what I mean by habits is, is the habit of as soon as you wake up in the morning, you're on your phone. Did that help you or make your day harder? Or as soon as you leave church, you doing a whole lot of other stuff that are habits, but does not help you keep your eyes on him, right? Those things. But then also, what are the habits that helped you? Okay. For example, for me, praying a lot more, a habit that helped me. It's a prayer, a habit we all should have, right? But it's a process. Amen. And so how do you how do you plan on inviting Christ into every situation in 2024? For some of you, you have to begin to pause. You don't have to rush everything. You don't have to rush everywhere. Begin to pause before you do things. God, are you in this? Some of you literally have gone through certain situations this year or gone certain places and encountered certain issues and the Holy Spirit tells you afterward, I did not lead you there. Okay. And so how do you plan on inviting Christ? I'm seeking you for your spirit of counsel. 
before I go anywhere. Because when you listen to the voice of the Lord, you can have plans to go somewhere. You can be like, I'm going to this movie theater. And he say, actually, I want you to go to this one. Are you willing to last minute change your plans? Or when he says, no, you need to stay home because you don't know what's happening at that place. You don't know what, whatever, right? And so how do you plan on inviting Christ? Some of you need to pause before you do certain things, before cer certain people, hey girl, I think it's a good idea to go here. You say, okay, I'll get back to you, okay? we The Holy Spirit, when you develop a close intimate relationship with him, I know there's some people here that can attest it. He picks out your outfits, he tells you what to speak. He tells you where to go. He tells you what you can eat, what you shouldn't eat. He tells you that today, actually, you need to fast from six to three. It doesn't make sense, but you're like, okay, not knowing that um, he somebody ends up calling you and they need a certain revelation or wisdom that only comes from you being in a fasted state. I don't know. It's happened before. So prayerfully, that makes sense. So those are the reflection questions, okay? And then this is what we're going to be working on together as a group. Um, okay, this is perfect timing. So this is a creative group activity, all right? So pretty much based on what you learned today, display in our and or articulate a moment <clears throat> or a period in 2023 where you were walking on water and then suddenly started sinking. So like how I like to joke around, you could be like, life was great. And then I looked around and the clock turned to eight. And then I said, uh, this plate finna get eight, but I didn't know that the plate would make me heavy. And now I'm sinking and my heart is on the flow. You know what I mean? Bars. But so something like that, a visual image, an art piece, a poem, a song, a short story. I love uh, giving an, a platform here during the Bible study for people who have these creative gifts to, you know, go ahead and bless us and allow the Holy Spirit to come in the room and give you a space to break past your fear and share your gift that the Lord has given you. Amen. And so that's what we're going to be working on today in Zoom. People who are doing it on YouTube, you could go ahead and do it at home, you know, share it with, with uh, your platform or however you want to do it. But um, this is what the Zoom participants are going to be doing today, okay? And so next, if you would like to sow a seed into this ministry, this information is here. So I'm going to leave this up for two minutes. And then after this, um, I have a quick brief message and then we're going to go off of Zoom, YouTube. I will see y'all in a bit. Okay, I know I always say two minutes, but I think y'all get the point. All right, so if you want to sow a seed into this ministry, I appreciate every seed. I thank you for joining us today for Bible study, okay? And then lastly, happy, because I won't see y'all again until the new year unless you join morning worship with me, amen? So um, happy new year, YouTube family. Happy new year, people who are here. I pray that you become a water walker this year. No matter what you see, no matter what's happening around you, may you keep your eyes yoked to Christ. May you cast your cares and may you always invite Christ into every situation so you can have the cohesive force of Christ, which is his peace, all right? YouTube, it has been a time. I love y'all so much, but it's time for me to go. Y'all do not have to go home, but y'all have to get off of this video, okay? I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all later. God bless, God bless. Amen and amen.